Well, hello. This is Mary Beth Temple coming to you live from scenic Fort Wayne, Indiana. <laughs> I'm in my home studio today on behalf of the Knitting Circle, and we are going to make a heart dishcloth. Now, if you'd like to follow along with the pattern, the link will be in the chat. And if you have any questions while I'm teaching, you go ahead and ask in the chat. That information will get to me and I will answer your questions. So we're going to talk about a couple of different things. We're gonna work in garter stitch, which is knitting all the time. So it's a super easy pattern. It's perfect for baby beginners. Um, I'm going to knit in cotton, like a dishcloth cotton, which is also good for washcloths, but you could use um, some of those yarns that are out now that have plastic in them. They work as scrubbies, that would be fun. You could do it in, uh, regular acrylic and pop it on a sweater or something. It doesn't have to be a dishcloth. But what we're going to talk about mostly is increasing and decreasing in garter stitch. So let's move over to my hands and I'm gonna move these lights so you can see my hands <laughs> and we're gonna get started. So the only thing we need to do is cast on two stitches. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a slip knot. There's my twisted loop. I'm gonna reach through the loop, grab my working yarn. Now the working yarn is the one that's attached to the ball of yarn. The one that's hanging loose in the wind is called the tail yarn. Give it a little tug, put it on my needle and give that a tug. And that counts as my first stitch. Now for my second stitch, I'm going to do a long tail cast on. So I have the working yarn away from me I have the cut yarn towards me and I have put my thumb and index finger in between. I'm going to take my right hand needle tip. I'm going to put it under the front strand from front to back and go under the strand that's over my index finger from back to front. I'm going to pull that right through the loop, get my thumb out of the way and tighten it up. And there's my second stitch. Just for now, I'm gonna cast on a couple of extra stitches so you can see that one more time. So, tail yarn towards me, working yarn away from me. Thumb and index finger in between, and I'm gonna spread them apart and make that V. Then I'm going to take my right hand needle tip, take it under that front strand from front to back, and under the strand that's over my index finger from back to front and pull it through the loop that's on my thumb. Now I'm gonna get my thumb out of the way and use it to tighten up the stitch. Under the front, under the back, pull it through, tighten up. So you can, once you get the hang of it, if you were doing a project that needed a lot of stitches, long tail cast on is really good and you can go really fast except I've run out of yarn. You do have to leave a long tail for the long tail cast on. I did not because I only needed the two stitches. So I'm just gonna pop these guys off because we don't need them. So here are my two stitches that I need for my heart dishcloth. Now it says work the setup rows. So row one, is a right side row. It says slip. Well, let's let's talk about what it what it says. It's S L one W Y I F K F B, which is alphabet soup. If you don't know what all those mean, so S L one is slip one. W Y I F is with yarn in front, and K F B is knit front and back, which is an increase. So it says to slip one with yarn in front, slip one stitch purlwise with yarn in front. So when I slip a stitch from one side to the other, I'm not doing anything to it. I'm not twisting it. I'm not knitting it. I'm not purling it. I'm not doing any kind of any madness at all. I'm just slipping it from one to the next. And it says to do it purl wise. So I'm gonna take my right hand needle tip as if I'm going to purl, but I'm not going to purl. I'm just gonna insert my needle tip right in there and slip it. I'm slipping it from one side to the other. Nothing else has happened. So that's slip one with yarn in front. Now it says knit front and back. Now to, I, to knit, I need my yarn in the back, but I wanna make sure I take it between the needles, not over, because if I take it over, I'm going to make an accidental yarn over and add a stitch where I don't want one. 
but we are adding a stitch. The KFB is an increase. So we're going to knit in the front and not push the stitch off the left hand needle. We're going to leave it there. And now we're going to knit one in the back of the same stitch. And now we're going to push it off the left hand needle. So we had one stitch on the left hand needle, but we turned it into two. All right, there is my slip and there is my knit front and back. Row two says slip one with yarn in front, knit front and back. So you don't have to worry if I went too fast with that knit front and back. We're going to do it 87 more times. <laughs> We're going to knit in the front and leave it on the left hand needle. Then we're going to knit in the back and take it off of the left hand needle. And that's my increase. And then knit one. So after the dashes, you'll see four stitches, three stitches, however many stitches. That's not telling you to work on those stitches. That's just letting you know that that's how many stitches you should have. So especially if you're a beginner knitter. Uh, it's really good to count at the end of your row and make sure that you have the same number of stitches that the pattern says you should. Now, I am working on circular needles because it makes my life easy. <laughs> and when I'm on camera, it's really hard for me to work in straight needles because they bang on the table and irritate everybody. But we always get this question. You can absolutely do this project on two straight needles if you would prefer to do that. Now, section three, it says increase rows. Slip one with yarn in front, knit two last two stitches. So I have to take that yarn to the back and I'm taking it between the needles, not over. And in this case, I only have to knit one to get to the last two stitches. There's two stitches left, knit front and back. So knit in the front of the stitch, don't pass it off. Knit in the back of the stitch, do pass it off knit one. So that's five stitches. Now it says for rows four to 38, repeat row three another 35 times so that you will have 40 stitches total. Now I'm not going to keep going till we have 40 stitches because we'll be here all day, <laughs> but I am going to, uh, I'm going to do a few more rows so that we have something to work on later. So slip one with yarn in front, Knit to last two stitches. Knit front and back. Knit front. Knit back. Push it off the left hand needle. Knit one. So since you're doing the same row over and over again, what's happening is on one row, you are increasing a stitch on one side of the heart and on the other row you're increasing a stitch on the other side of the heart and the reason we're making slip stitches at the beginning is to give me a nice neat side edge and again once i have a few more rows on here you can see already those are my slipped stitches it gives you a really nice edging on the side of your piece. Now for my little heart dishcloth here, I'm not adding any kind of edging or anything like that. Slip one with yarn in front, knit to the last two stitches. But uh, having that nice edging, I mean, it's just, it's nice to look at on something like this, like a dishcloth, but if you use that slipped edging on other pieces that you might have to put an edging on or maybe sew together, it gives you a nice foundational base from which to work. Now, why am I using a knit front and back increase instead of any of the other increases that we use here, like a make one or a yarn over? Well, the yarn over is going to give you a lacy look, which we don't want for a dishcloth or a washcloth. We don't want to see lace, we want texture. So that's one reason. But the other reason is the way the knit front and back is created. Whoop, I lost my stitch there. <laughs> the way the knit front and back is created, the way that uh, the way that the little ridges are created when you make a knit front and back increase, 
it hides really well in garter stitch. So oftentimes if you're using a garter stitch pattern, you will find the increases that are in there are the, uh, are the knit front and back increases just because they're really easy to hide. It doesn't leave any gaps. It doesn't look too big or too loosey goosey. So I'm going to put just a few more rows in here. I guess we're doing knitting ASMR for a couple minutes. And once again, if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask in the chat. Here's my knit front and back. Get the last stitch. Slip one with yarn in front. Knit to last two stitches. Knit front and back, knit front, knit back, knit the last stitch. All right, let's do one more because I, the next thing I want to show you is some decreases and I have to have some stitches on here. I'm not going to have anything to decrease. <laughs> Counting while I go seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, if you want to adjust the size of your heart, you can go more rows, you can go fewer rows, um, but you do want to make sure that you have an even number of stitches when you get to the decrease section. And once again, here is the side that we were talking about with our slipped stitch edging. Look how nice and neat that is. And it also looks nice and neat if you're looking down from the front. After we have done our increase rows, we're going to have a section where we're just going to, uh, it's called the straight section and you're just going to knit. Slip one with yarn in front, knit to end. And we're going to do that for rows 39 to 44. So that's six rows. And again, I'm not going to do six rows. I'll just do two to keep us going along. But you do want to, no matter what section you're doing, you do want to maintain that slipped stitch on the edge just to keep things nice and even. So one more row I'm going to do here, slip one with yarn in front, knit to the end. All right, for the next section, it says begin decreasing. Once the bottom of the heart is complete, and again, you'll follow along with the pattern, decreases are worked to begin the top of the heart. For the SSK decrease, that is slip, slip, knit. Slip a stitch as if to knit to the right needle. Slip a second stitch as if to knit to the right needle. Slip both stitches back to the left needle and knit two together through the back loops. And for the knit two together decrease, simply knit two stitches together. So we're going to slip one with yarn in front. And now we're going to SSK. And I want to get my yarn to the back of the work now because the next stitch is a knit. I don't want to try and slip it after that decrease. So I'm going to slip one knitwise, slip the next one, 
knitwise, I'm going to put them back onto the left hand needle. So now there they are. They're the same two stitches that they always were. They're just, uh, the orientation has changed. Now I'm going to knit two together through the back loop. So I'm going to knit these two stitches by putting my right hand needle tip through both of them as one and I, through to the back because I'm working in the back loop. So I'm going to yarn over, bring my work through, and I'm going to pop both of them off at the same time. That is an SSK decrease, and we'll do, we'll do it again just to make sure you guys can see what's going on. So it says knit to the last three stitches. So here's my last three stitches, one, two, three. Knit two together. Um, and one thing I wanna I point out, cotton yarn doesn't have a whole lot of elasticity, so it can be a little tight to get in there. And you might notice I'm doing it out of habit. If you push your work closer to the needle tip where the taper begins, you have a little more room. You don't want them to come off, <laughs> but it does make your life a little bit easier. So that was row uh, 45 in this case. Uh, 46, 47, 48, slip one, knit to end. Uh, so all I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do row 45 one more time. I, I've sort of have lost the plot here with my uh, knitting the actual heart, but my job here today is to teach you about increases and decreases in garter stitch. It is not, <laughs> it is not to make a dishcloth, even though that's fun. So I'm just knitting back to where we were. So let's take a look at row 45 one more time, just to kind of get the hang of it. Slip one with yarn in front, and we do that pearlwise like we've been doing. SSK. So I'm going to go ahead and get that yarn to the back between the needles. Slip one, slip two, put them back on the left hand needle. Now, the way I did it earlier, and the way we uh, teach this usually is to pull that right hand needle tip out. But if you're watching, when I put that on the left hand needle, if I keep the left hand needle in the front and keep the right hand needle in the back, I don't have to take them out and then put it back. I can just leave it there because it's already there. And again, this is not the pattern. I'm going to do that SSK one more time because I really want you guys to see what's going on. So we're going to slip one knit wise, slip the next one knit wise, put them back on the left hand needle and keep that right hand needle in the back knit two together through the back loop. So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take those out because we didn't really need that SSK there. All right, so now it says knit to the last three stitches. There's my last three stitches, knit two together. So remember, I'm just going through two stitches as one. And if I need a little extra room, I can push it towards the taper of the knitting needle. Just make sure you don't lose it. Whoops, I picked up a ply there. There we go. And then knit that last one. So you can see even on this little tiny piece, you can see my decreases are starting to happen. So if you look at the picture on the pattern, this is where we are right here. We're starting to decrease on both sides equally. Now moving on to the next step, it says separate stitches for the top of the heart. So from here on out, and again, uh, you're gonna have to trust me on this and follow along with the pattern because uh, we have such a tiny little swatch here. I think it'll be hard to see. But what's going to happen is you're going to work on the first half of the stitches 
following the instructions. And there's nothing here that we haven't already done. We have our slip one with yarn in front. We have our SSK decreases, which we know how to do. We have our knit two together decreases, which we know how to do. Um, so we're going to follow along with the pattern. And now it doesn't look like gobbledygook anymore. We know what all those letters mean. <laughs> and then we're going to bind off at the top. And then we're going back to here, back to where we left off. Now, one thing you'll notice in the photos for this pattern, which I think is really clever, is the designer, Jen Lucas, has added a locking stitch marker on the right side of the work. And the reason she did that is so that when you put your work down and come back and what have you, you can tell which is the right side, which is the wrong side. It keeps, when you uh, add your second half here, if you were to start from the wrong side, it, it would not be attractive. So it just, it helps you remember which is a right side row and which is a wrong side row. And you're gonna do the same thing so that you have your bind off on this side that matches your bind off on this side. And let's see, do we have anything else? Weave in your ends and enjoy your dishcloth. So let's look at the bind off real quick. Once again, if you have any questions, now's your chance because we're almost done. Um, so I'm gonna do a simple bind off and it's all going to be knit stitches because we're working a garter stitch. So all of our stitches were knit. So I'm going to knit the first two stitches, take the first one, and pass it over the second one. Knit the next stitch, take the first one, pass it over the second one. Knit the next stitch, to sense a theme, <laughs> pass the first one over the second one. This is a very simple bind off, suitable for beginners. And then we're coming up to the end. And then what you would do, oh, I can't reach my scissors. Give me one second. All right, we're gonna cut our yarn. Hopefully your scissors are sharper than mine. <laughs> I like to uh, take that cut tail and bring it through that last loop and give it a little tug. And this is what our bind off edge looks like. We have these nice little loops sitting all in a row. And again, it looks very nice with the nice little loops sitting all in a row that we have going all the way around the piece because we slipped that first stitch of every row. So uh, my friendly friend at the Knitting Circle, if you wanna put my face back on so I can say goodbye to the friends. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me here at the Knitting Circle. I am Mary Beth Temple. If you're not a member of the Knitting Circle, you should be. There's lots of cool information there for you, including fabulous patterns like this heart dishcloth. I hope you had a great time making it and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.